Live from New York, it's theCUBE. Covering Big Data New York City 2016. Brought to you by headline sponsors, Cisco, IBM, NVIDIA, and our ecosystem sponsors. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Peter Burris. Welcome back to New York City, everybody. This is theCUBE, the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. Peter Burris and I are going to wrap up four, four days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage of Big Data NYC, Strata <laughs> Plus the Duke World. Big Data Week. It's been a good week. It has right? been a great week, Dave. We, we, we came in here expecting to hear a lot about machine learning. We heard a lot about machine learning. We came in here expecting to hear a lot about the next phase of maturity in Hadoop. We heard a lot about some derivative tools that are intended to accelerate the pace of innovation and business value in Hadoop. We also came in here expecting to hear about a lot of new tools, new technologies, new approaches to doing things. And while there wasn't an enormous amount of that, it's pretty clear that the ecosystem around Hadoop is starting to settle down, recognize what Hadoop does well, and uh, embrace Spark and some of the other new things that are, and, and for example, data warehousing, and recognize that all of these are going to end up contributing to a company's analytics capabilities. Right, and um, so Monday, of course, we did a, a, an event with NVIDIA, so a lot on GPU, a lot of questions about GPU and CPU, what's it going to look like, how's it going to shake out, what are the use cases and apps, and that's a business with a ton of momentum. And Tuesday was great, Tuesday, Tuesday was kind of data science day. IBM organized this fantastic panel of data scientists that I got to interview eight data scientists for an hour, it was, and it flew by. And then of course IBM had this pretty significant announcement where, I, again, we've kind of been unpacking it. Essentially what IBM is, is they stitched together a number of existing tools that they had, brought in some partners, and then presented it in a, a new way with a natural language interface. With, Looks pretty cool. Looks like they're really going to potentially make some new breakthroughs there. Taking what traditionally would have been an IBM services-led business and putting it into software, which I think, Peter, is fundamental for IBM's success going forward. Oh, I, I agree. And it and also kind of speaks to the transformation that IBM has been going on for the last you know, number of years, where before they were the company that sold to the CIO better than anybody, and now they're one of the companies that sells to the CEO as well as anybody. And so if you think about do you think about uh, the whole DataWorks notion, it's about trying to get technology into the hands of people who are actually going to create business value with it, and uh, not just through a services play, but through a software play. And given that some of the old guard is actually getting rid of some of their software, it's good to see IBM uh, recommit to trying to bring good software to users that are responsible for creating business value. Yeah, and to your point about you know the maturity of the ecosystem and the tooling, and we're not spending hardly any time, if any, talking about you know the Hadoop distros. Those days are are long yeah. gone. I mean, you know, HortonWorks obviously came on, but even you know what you see from them is a real discussion around business value, sort of driving innovation and applying data to support monetization strategies. The other piece is so sort of big data week, uh, hinge uh, next to last week's data science summit where we really did some excellent research in terms of understanding the frameworks that chief data officers are using uh, to build out their data organizations. Really starting with understanding how data can be used to help drive business value, not necessarily monetizing the data itself. Oh, there's some of that going on. But many companies early on made the mistake of, okay, how are we going to monetize our data? And like, well, we can't. You know, we're yeah, not yeah. going to go compete against you know, data marts, yeah. uh, data well, markets, rather. There was this so, whole notion of the data economy where everybody's going to sell yeah. data to each other, and a good data scientist gets in the middle of that and says, yes, please, because I'll take all your data and I will re-engineer your customers, what your customers want, what your customers are buying. <laughs> I will take all your customers away from you in a week and a half. So I think that the concept of monetization of data is now a recognition that it's not selling the data, but actually finding ways to generate new so sources of value out of data within the business. Uh, so for example, Bill Schmarzo talks about this, or our dean of big data talks about this all the time, where, the, the, where we're really trying to go with this is recognize that data should be regarded as an asset that should be able to generate returns, and in fact, because of its special qualities, might even be able to generate greater returns than a lot of the other assets that are available, given what technology can do today. Cloud, another big theme. I mean, you know, it's, it's sort of trite, but cloud is taking hold. It's almost like people are surprised, but you're hearing that a lot, which is, is interesting. I mean, we've sort of seen this for years in our re research and our data, 
that big data was going to happen, a lot of big data anyway, in the cloud. So the you know, question is, if you don't have a cloud strategy, what are you going to do? It's, it's interesting to see a lot of these distro vendors saying, okay, we're going we're to be in the Amazon marketplace, or we're going to reside in the Azure marketplace, et cetera. But those companies, Amazon, uh, Google, uh, 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 Microsoft, are building out their own data pipelines, right? <laughs> and, well, and they they want to they want to create value above just the raw infrastructure, and that's going to be one of the biggest consumers of that raw infrastructure will be the pipelines and the tooling and the application yeah. capabilities that are will be required to turn all that into value. So that, that's where the profit's going to be. And they're going to happily commoditize that, that infrastructure. And, which and, I, and I think going back to you know, the notion, we've touched upon a couple of things. I said that you know, it's that, that derivative play. We're now at a point where the derivative play, what happens after people first recognize what Hadoop is and is not good at. Uh, our research shows pretty strongly that the community is struggling a little bit with complexity. Mm -hmm. And cloud is one of the answers to some of that complexity. Um, uh, what, what, you know, creating new and different types of partnerships. We've heard a lot about new partnerships. Uh, what IBM is doing, answers to dealing with the complexity. So a lot of the open source software in place, and so uh, not to confuse anybody, we don't think open source is dead. We don't think open source in and of itself as a way of creating and, and innovating with software is bad. But we think increasingly we're going to see some of these other mechanisms for ensuring that customers get visibility into how tools do things and how they create visib uh, business value with this enormous wealth of open source software that's been generated. Well, I'll stay on that for a second. So Rob Hof published an article, you helped contribute to that, uh, The Broken Promises of Open Source Software and you know, what can be done about it. In big data. In big data, yes. And, and so, that's right. Uh, and, and so, a couple of observations that you know, we made this week. One is that when you compare, everybody likes to compare the sort of, who's the red hat of big data? But if you go back to Linux, you've made the observation that there was such a huge community of Unix you know, experts out there that when Linux came out, they didn't need help. They knew exactly what to do with it. They didn't have to call your red hat for support. That plus, I meant, you know, pointed out that IBM under Steve Mills put a billion dollars into the Linux marketplace to sort of, you know, tip the scales with Microsoft, <laughs> and uh, and it Successfully. worked. It worked. It was a brilliant strategy, um, but nonetheless, that was a far less complex uh, situation than you have today with big data, where people don't really understand how to use, you know, Flume and Scoop and Hive and Pig and all these other tooling. Uh, tool sets, so what do they do? Well, they, they call Cloudera. So, they... so one of the things that's interesting about this market, Dave, and it's, and, it's, and it's indicative of how important this transformation is, is that the use case for an operating system is pretty clear. Mm. The use case for a SQL database is pretty clear. The use case for an application development tool is pretty clear. One of the things that's interesting about big data is the use case has become more clear as a consequence of using the tools. So you have multiple levels of complexity going on in the marketplace right now. Will this all settle out? Yeah, we'll, we'll settle it out. And we'll see where the profit pools end up as a consequence. But what's clear is that the idea that we're just going to give people the opportunity to download stuff and let them play with it, and suddenly this is magically all going to come together so that we get this enormous, highly valuable production systems as a consequence, that just isn't playing out. It's going to be a lot of hard work is going to go into making all of this stuff deliver on these enormous promises that, quite frankly, will ultimately deliver, but it's just going to take a little bit of time. Well, and five years ago when we published the first big data report, what jumped out the chart to me was the pie chart of hardware, software, and services, and it was predominantly services. Software was quite small, now you could explain that, okay, open source software, the license fees you know, aren't as large, but we put forth the supposition that that has to change in order for this business to scale. It cannot continue to be a services-led business, and to the point you know, you've been making all week is if if in this space you've got to call these vendors to get that support, it, it's going to be very expensive for them and very hard for them to make money. So they're not going to be able to replicate what happened in, in Linux. The other, again, I keep talking about IBM, but the example there is this is a services-led company that absolutely has to 
put their services expertise into software in, in order to scale. Yeah, and it was very interesting to, uh, so you, you did, you did uh, Edge and uh, the Data Science Summit in Boston yes. with IBM last week. You were at Open I World. did o Oracle Open World and here this week. And it's very interesting to put all of that together because some really interesting stories come out. Number one, it's very, very obvious that the market is starting to pick up at least one of our key research teams, I'd love to say it's all our doing, but it's not, of course, is that this notion of data is an asset. And increasingly businesses need to acknowledge that what they do with their data is going to have an enormous impact on how their business works. Secondly, as you said, cloud is also now in that second phase, that second phase of adoption, the de that derivative play. And we're now seeing different approaches to thinking about how we package cloud, kind of what we mentioned earlier. Uh, and uh, one of the drivers of that will be that people are now looking at big data, cloud, data value, new types of partnerships, and that may in fact be one of the primary drivers of cloud growth and big data growth in combination over the next few years. On the back side of that, you have IoT. And we also started hearing, I think for the first time, some very interesting approaches to thinking about IoT and the relationship between IoT and big data. And for me anyway, a first time that I've heard folks acknowledge that IoT is going to lead to analytics at the edge, processing at the edge, and some new types of architectures. Whereas for the last few years, we've heard a lot about everything's going to go up to some central location, and we're going to crush it with, uh, with these tools. Yeah, you, you know, this notion of edge to cloud is probably a little too simplistic, is really the point there. It's going to be a lot more complicated than that and, and require a lot more touch points and an ecosystem to, to support that. The other big thing we heard this week is, you know, the cleaning up of the data lake. We kind of, we all knew this. When the term data lake came out, we all said, uh-oh, this is going to be, well, not all of us. I mean, a lot of the vendor community was like going crazy after it, but we as analysts and you know, bloggers and so forth said, wow, this is going to be you know, messy. Because you're kind of kicking the can down the road on actually applying schema. Right? A discipline. <laughs> a discipline, right. That's good. And so now we're hearing about a lot of companies trying to help solve that problem, which is critical. And again, the chief data officer framework is one of those steps is you got to have trust in that data. You got to have provenance. You got to have data quality. And so you know, we're starting to see machine learning techniques applied to helping clean up that Boston Harbor data lake. Yeah, and that's, right. you know, that, that is, that's, that's a real advance. And again, it's an mm. example of a derivative technology play where if we, George uh, refers to this based on some, uh, Brian Arthur and some others uh, who have studied innovation deeply in some of our research shows, we call it the adaptive stretch, where you take a look at a tool and you apply the tool to a particular set of use cases and you realize that the tool isn't quite a perfect match, so you start stretching it. And you stretch it and you stretch it until it breaks and you start again. And that's kind of what Hadoop and Spark is part of that transition. But we are uh, seeing a proliferation of use cases, some of them successful, some of them not, a proliferation of tools, and finally, a first pass from companies like Alation and others that are now bringing in technology to start going back and cleaning all this stuff up. Okay, so this is again a wrap for four days wall-to-wall -wall coverage here at Big Data NYC. The Cube is, are we doing Juniper next week? Is that right? We're doing Juniper, Juniper next week, yeah. And then October's a big month for us. We've got a couple of big events coming toward the end of October. We have in the third week of October, uh, Dell EMC World, that's going to be the first sort of coming out of the new Dell technologies. They're calling it, I think, Dell EMC World. So we'll be down there at, at Dell EMC World interviewing Michael Dell. And that same week is the Grace Hopper, Anita Borg Women in Tech, Celebration of Women in Tech. We have a huge booth down there. We've got the partnership going with the Ground Truth, Charlie Sennett's organization. We have our fellowship. We have three women fellows that are now you know, undertaking, they're in a practicum right now, and they're researching uh, women in tech, equal pay, why more women don't, who graduate with a computer science degree don't get into you know, the, te the tech business. Covering that, we've also got two fellows. Location from, of that. Uh, it, that's in, uh, in Houston at uh, the Grace Hopper uh, Celebration of Women, Anita Borg Celebration of Women event. We've got two students from Palo Alto High School uh, one, one man and one woman coming as well. So we got five fellows, we're going to be publishing a ton of content. We've got an amazing 
line up there. We're really excited about that. And then at the end of the month, the World of Watson in Las Vegas, uh, Ginny Rometty is going to be speaking. First time I can recall that Ginny has actually spoken at one of the customer conferences. Of course, Ginny, you're welcome to come on the cube. We're trying <laughs> to get her on there. We got inquiries in. You know, the ask is in. It would be unprecedented for Ginny to come on a show like this, but uh, uh, we'd be happy to have her. Love to to talk about that. But that's a big deal because. It's, it used to be IBM Insight. They've changed the name to World of Watson. Obviously, IBM's going for it with that whole AI play. So, She's a great speaker. She's got a lot of good things to say. So, Peter, it's been a pleasure working with you this always week. Dave. Really uh, fantastic. Uh, gents, the crew, always Patrick, Seth, Alex, Brendan. Brian, thank you. And uh, appreciate all your help. And, of course, Bert Lattimore watching. The crowd chat's doing a great job. And Kristen Nicole, our managing editor. Uh, always a pleasure reading what you summarize after these shows. So thanks for watching, everybody. This is a wrap. Check out siliconangle.tv, wikibon.com for all the research, and, uh, and siliconangle.com for all the news. We'll see you next week. Thank you.